Hi everyone, my name is Nicola Dalmazzo and I work in Google Map Platform. And I'm here today with David Rubin from Visa and Ken Hart from Snowdrop Solutions to talk about transaction enrichment. One week ago, we were together on stage at Money 2020, one of the largest financial um, event uh, in Europe, um, to show how um, geospatial technology can make financial service industry more helpful, secure, and efficient. And today we're gonna show you how every transaction can be associated to a piece of information about the merchant, about the location, and, uh, and more, uh, to make this more clearly understandable by consumer, and also to give the bank more information to offer better service. Ken, can you tell us a little bit about Snowdrop and how you enter in the financial sector? Sure. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for taking the time, Nicola, to introduce Snowdrop. A uh, little bit of background. Snowdrop, we're based in the United Kingdom, Spain and Singapore. We've been working with Google Maps platform for nearly 10 years in the financial services, travel and real estate sectors. A few years ago, we developed some new, let's call it user experiences. For some, but the, in the UK, they call challenger banks, other places call them digital banks or neo banks. What we did was we used some of the power that Google Maps places, which is really 200 million different merchants and places around the world. And we're able to map messy transactions that people often don't understand and really give them that clarity by using, uh, by mapping, as I mentioned, it directly to the Google Maps places database. And the partnership with Visa has enabled us to really scale this up throughout Europe and expand into new services and new territories. So that's a little bit about Snowdrop, what we're doing. Thanks, Ken. Uh, now to you, David. Thanks for coming, by the way. Um, it's really great to have you here as a, an industry that, uh, you know, uh, represents really the financial sector. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, this collaboration that we started uh, one year and a half ago and uh, where you brought uh, uh, here? Sure. Um, th thanks for the invitation as well and, and welcome to everyone. Um, with Visa, we see billions of transactions a day. Um, and those transactions sometimes can be a bit confusing for cardholders, um, and they can be a bit a bit plain and vanilla for them as well. And so one of the things that we were trying to do was to say, hey, there's more technology out there. More and more of these transactions are being done um, with cards digitally. How can we bring in more information to the cardholder, and how can we delight them? Um, and so what we did is, is we've worked together with um, Snowdrop, with Google, to really try to bring that extra level of information to the cardholder. One, to allow them to understand better what their transactions are, where they've been transacting, but also to delight them. And, and you know, I think through the conversation, we'll talk about some of the news use cases that we're looking at, but really going beyond just a piece of information that's being um, translated across. How can we excite and delight uh, the cardholder with some of this information instead of just a simple um, tag about how much they've spent in a certain place? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, well, Ken, now let's go a little bit more uh, into the deep dive, especially on the tech uh, part. Uh, how Google Map Platform products uh, comes uh, to really bring uh, uh, more information to each transaction. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, I'll go through what we've built and how it works with Google. So we've built uh, a simple API on top of Google Cloud and Google Maps. It's called a Merchant Reconciliation System or the MRS API. What it does is it takes the messy merchant information that is found often in the point of sales at a merchant. So, you know, something that may be Starbucks instead of Starbucks or M&S or some version of Domino's Pizza and a little bit of the address, a little bit of the postcode. And what we do is we take that messy information, we clean it up, we find the merchant in Google Maps, and we return a couple of things. The first thing we do is we return a clean name rather than the messy name. Second thing is we return a logo. That's something that Snowdrop provides on top of the Google Places database. And then we have the category, and if someone needs, they click and have all the written information that comes out of Google Places, including, if you want, directions how to get there, phone number to call the merchant rather than calling the bank if there's a question about the what you see in your bank statement, as well as, say, you know, imagery, what it looks like in Street View, 
or restaurants reviews, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole wealth of additional information beyond the clean name and logo that we can provide, including in the future, and we'll talk about this, other sustainable areas that we can do. But in, in a nutshell, that's how it works. No personal information is ever shared with Snowdrop, Visa, or Google. It's just the messy information about uh, the, the transaction. That's what we clean up and deliver a clear, compelling user experience instead. Sure. So also in the financial sector, we brought a little bit of the magic of Google Maps, UX, UI, information, et cetera, uh, to the consumer, right? Um, okay. Um, well, so um, this looks uh, interesting. And David, tell us a little bit more um, what has been the result so far. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some, some amazing results and, and we look at sort of two, two parts of it. One is, is for a, a, a bank, you know, what's their level of engagement and some of the cost savings that they've been able to achieve, and then on the cardholder side as well. So if we take the first one, you know, we've been able to have a significant cost savings, uh, pass that along to the, to the banks that have been implementing this. And so exactly as Ken was talking about, when I look at a transaction, and this has actually happened to me, and I know, Nicola, we've talked about this in the past, you know, you see Roy Dobson's. And you go, oh, I've spent 50 pounds here. I don't really remember where that is. And if you didn't have this enriched system, you might call up your bank and you might say, I'm a bit confused as to why I've seen this charge. But using an enriched transaction, not only will that have the name, which was actually a gas station or a petrol station, but you would see where it was. And so I go, oh, yes, OK. So I remember filling up at this gas station. It might not be the one that I typically fill up with. It might be one that I was you know, using when I was on a trip. And so for that, it's, it's very useful for, for the cardholder. And then that, again, passed along to the bank and they can save on their, on their call centers. But it also is the engagement side of things. And we've recently launched with a bank in Germany where they saw their um, app store um, rating move up significantly right after they've launched their app. And so, you know, it's a win-win. It's going to help engagement. We see, you know, on average about a you know, 15 percentage point increase in NPS. Um, we see more engagement with the app more engagement, more time. And it's something that makes sense as well. It makes sense for me as a cardholder to go into my banking app to see an, a richer transaction. Thanks, David. Uh, Ken, can you explain us a little bit more in details uh, how um, this works? So where the transaction come from, which side of the transaction you collect, uh, how you associate this with, with Google Maps, how you get the logos, uh, and, and then how can you give back this information you know, to, the, to the digital owners in the banks? Sure. Let me take a few, a few moments and go through what we do and what we don't do. So how does this work? The Merchant Reconciliation API basically takes messy information, as I mentioned from the authentication message, right? So when a, uh, an initial transaction is being authorized in a merchant, what's being sent to us is just, and it can be messy, the name of the merchant, the postcode, the address, and the merchant category code. What we do is we immediately respond with a clean merchant name, a category, a logo, if the logo is for that merchant, if not, it'll be an icon. And if someone needs more information when they get it back, and that's in near real time, it just takes, like I said, a few milliseconds to process the whole problem, this whole thing. Then someone clicks and they get more information, like where is it on a map, how can I get there, what's the reviews and the ratings. Just to be clear, no personal information is ever shared with Snowdrop, Deezer, or Google here. In fact, we're just using, as I mentioned, the payment scheme information underneath, it's agnostic as well. So we work with all types of debit, credit card, different types of transactions. Again, it's just messy data we need, no personal information, not even the amount. So that's how the, the Merchant Reconciliation API works. It's very similar to, in a way, how Google Maps works, right? You're going to be asking for uh, a certain address and you'll come back with the, you know, here's the merchant nearby. We're doing something very similar, but in addition to the Google information, we're providing stuff like the clean name and the logo that Google does not provide. Uh, on top of this, we have additional bits of information that we can go into more detail that come from sometimes from Snowdrop or other third parties around sustainability, but that's probably best to go through in a workshop. 
Sure, sure. Um, thanks. And uh, David, uh, maybe let's talk a bit about um, how users perceive their bank app, you know, across the world. You know, we see some example of Europe, especially, you know, starting from UK at the beginning, but now growing where, you know, these neo banks at the end, uh, they were like technology company that uh, happens to be in, in, uh, in finance, right? So they were bringing an interface very similar to uh, the modern, you know, YouTube, TikTok, etc. Right? Um, is it everywhere the same? Um, do you see uh, this coming? Uh, what the clients uh, say? So yeah, I mean, I think as you see the use of banking on smartphones start to increase, people's assumption is that if I'm using my smartphone, then it might have, it should have similar functionality to all the other apps that I see on my smartphone. So when a user goes into their banking app on their smartphone and they just see a plain bit of, of text, they don't see any logos, they don't see any icons, they don't see any image imagery, then they start to say, well, wait a second, this isn't really filling my need and I don't feel satisfied. And I think that's where um, today we already have a great first step in, in what Snowdrop does in collaboration with Google in terms of getting that, that logo going to the next level and getting the, seeing the positioning on the map um, and, and getting that first step. But there's lots of opportunity to go even further. So you know, we could think about when I travel and instead of having to hold on to that receipt for three, five, you know, maybe even 10 years, I might have all my transactions there and I could earmark in my, you know, on my digital device the same way that I keep notes and other things, um, that great coffee shop that I went to in, in New York or that uh, wonderful um, wine bar in Milan, uh, and I have that available to me. So we really think that there's a, a, an opportunity as banking starts to move more and more and people become more and more used to using their, their smartphone as their primary interface with their with their bank and with their financial transactions to deliver rich and meaningful experiences to, to the cardholder. So just to give an example, Google Maps Platform recently published a report from Oxford Economics that surveyed many leading companies and consumers around, in key cities around the world. And they were asking, where does geospatial information play a key role? In the UK, it's the second most important area in cleaning up transaction and you know transactions on banking statements this is saying that the uk consumers have really internalized the use of highly accurate location enhanced transaction returns it's expected it's a given banks understand the benefits lowers calls to the call center and consumers really expect this intuitive service again it's uh, one of the top reasons we've deployed it starting in the UK, and we believe that this will spread out as other people embrace digital banking throughout the world. Well, user across the world, uh, so now you know it. So if you don't have it in your hub, go ask to your bank and uh, we can definitely help. Yep. It only takes a few days to set up, right? The API is super straightforward. We have all the contracts ready to go with Visa and they literally can... We've launched a, a, in just a couple of days with some banks, a quick pilot to, to show you the results. So all good to go. Maybe we can um, continue a little bit uh, also about uh, what what is coming next or what is the vision, right? So um, good to have a, a, a good report at the end of the month, but uh, we can do more, right? Can, and we are already working a little bit on this, some of these ideas. Very much. So let me point out just a couple of things. As David mentioned, when you clean up the transactions, the consumer's happier. If the consumer's happier, they see more intuitively and they better understand their spend. They're more engaged and that builds trust. That transparency builds trust and that sets the basis for the bank to offer more engaging services for the consumers, both retail and potentially uh, other services. So just a, a few examples. We know that international transactions, when people are traveling abroad, as David mentioned earlier, you're not doing your normal habitual spend. Those are the transactions that are often different currencies, different time zones, people don't recognize the brands. So even though international transactions, maybe in the UK only represent 11% of all transactions, they're actually a very large portion of the troublesome transactions and the worries why people call their banks. So the first thing that we do is we're able to clean up transactions anywhere in the world 
using the power of Google Maps underneath. The second thing we're able to do is once we built that trust and that intuitive engagement, we're able to offer new services like, hey, when you're traveling abroad, we can make some recommendations, rewards, cash backs and loyalty. We've had great success with a number of UK banks in this area already. Finally, um, it sets this expectation to give people more clarity about their spending insights. How much money you're spending? Could it be offered at more green merchants, et cetera? And there's a whole range in the ecosystem between Visa, Snowdrop, and Google to lay that foundation for additional transactions, additional offers, and additional basically clear information so people can really be uh, more in control of their spend and have a better idea of the impact of their spend. So this is a little bit of a sneak preview. There's some more stuff that we'll be announcing at the end of the summer. Great, great. No, that's uh, that's what we are working on. So stay tuned. And uh, this is uh, also using, uh, you know, uh, the, the current technology and potentially also new data that is going to come on Google Map platform. Um, David, maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, about the role of the um, Visa uh, partner ecosystems, uh, how you guys see, you know, this collaboration between uh, a tech provider like us and uh, a partner uh, uh, that is working with our technology and uh, the, the the sector you are trying to serve, right? Sure. So so Visa is in a, a, an excellent position to increase and amplify the reach of, of some of our fintech partners um, and also bring some of the domain expertise, um, such as financial services, to a, a partner like Google who uh, has expertise in financial services, but in a, diff- a little bit of a different way. And so, you know, we believe in, in the power that, of the network of networks. So we're bringing all of the different capabilities to the fore to enrich um, our capabilities as well and what, and what we see in the network. So, you know, we see a real opportunity to amplify the reach of, of fintechs um, where it might take them a little bit of extra time, um, incredible reach across, you know, throughout the world. We see lots of transactions come through as well. And so, you know, we can use that breadth really to um, start some new services and, and to move the market in, in certain directions, right? And so I think, you know, another thing that we look at is, as Ken mentioned, and as we start to look forward, is that it's becoming the new norm. So as we're working through with um, some of our traditional banks, a lot of the, the neo banks have come through and have offered some of these innovative services. But in partnering with someone like Snowdrop and also with Google, we can collaborate together to bring some of these capabilities to some of the more traditional banks. Just to, if I may, Nicola, just to build on what David just said, you know, you have the real financial services expertise in the network of networks that Visa brings to the fore, as well as their extended ecosystem of other partners that we can integrate with, right? We have the absolute mind blowing power of Google Maps and Google Cloud, you know, to do literally billions of transactions every month in hundreds of countries literally around the world in less than 50 milliseconds response time per transaction at well over 95% accuracy. So that's really just bringing all the power together makes great experiences and you know it sets the foundation for more things to come. So it's been um, a really great partnership that really plays to each partner's strength and that's what we're trying to do here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ken, for being here today on Maps on Air. Um, and for everyone uh, listening, if you want to know more about transaction enrichment, uh, you can find the technical information in our website, Google Map Platform. You can uh, visit uh, um, Snowdrop Solution website where you can learn more about uh, the MRS solution. And finally, uh, you can find on Visa Navigate a report that we co-write with uh, um, Visa about the importance of transaction enrichment and what is our vision. Thank you very much and see you next time.